Hello and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. Today I'm going to talk about and demonstrate how to machine polish plastic model cars. Um, my absolute least favorite part of building model cars is polishing. I, I just hate it. It takes so long doing it by hand and the whole time I'm doing it I'm thinking there's got to be a better way. Since I was 16 years old I've been detailing my own one-to-one -one cars and I have a fabulous random orbital machine polisher that works amazingly and I just keep thinking to myself how can I incorporate machine polishing into the 124 125th scale world and so I began doing some research now I've seen guys using for example Dremel tools with polishing heads things like that I use this for a little bit but this will burn through your clear and paint in a split second so if you want to use these, you just have to be super, super careful. If you even get close to an edge, um, a corner, anything, it'll grab and it'll just rip under there. And this just uh, was not going to be a viable option for me. The other problem is um, the slowest speed I can get this thing down is to um, 5,000 RPM, which is way too fast. So this was not a viable option for me, so I had to find something else. So I began looking around and online I found some one inch polishing sponges. And I thought these are going to be perfect. And they are. I bought these on Amazon. They came in three bags and it's got the coarse, medium and fine sponges. Um, I don't have links to these because they change all the time. And so the links are only good for a little while. Anyway, so you can just do a search these are one inch or 25 millimeter buffing or polishing sponges. So just do a search for one inch polishing sponges and something like this should come up. One of the other nice features that came with these bags of sponges was this hook and loop pad to hook the pads to. And now I've got a way to polish, almost. It came with a thread head and I didn't have a way to drive this. So I began looking for some sort of a mandrel or something to hook up to my Dremel. Uh, but again, it was way too fast. Even on those lowest setting, it's just flipping product everywhere, which obviously, which means I probably have too much. Even just a little bit of product, it would just flip it all over my workstation. Uh, so again, I needed to find something else to, to drive this now that I have the size of polishing sponges that I wanted. So back to the drawing board, I began doing some more research. I couldn't find anything. So in doing some more research, I found a mandrel, which is a 1 8 inch mandrel um, that would drive that, that I could hook up to my driving pad now and have a way to hook this up to something. But I couldn't find this anywhere. So the only place I could find it was by ordering a two inch polishing driving pad because this mandrel came with this pad and this bag of polishing pads, claws, hook and loop again. So I don't use these. Again, I had to buy this all so that I could get my eighth inch mandrel. And then I needed to find a way to drive this. I was using my cordless drill for a while which was working great because I could control the speed, um, but my batteries kept dying. And so I needed to find another option for that. I wanted something that was corded that would plug in so I wouldn't be running out of batteries and constantly having to change out my batteries and wait for them to charge. So I once again went back and started doing some research and I found this, which is way heavy duty. I know that but it's basically, it's a close quarters drill that's plugged in. So I can plug this in, I can plug, I can screw my mandrel into here, and this is now my setup for polishing. And it's variable, variable speed. And what this is, is this is a close quarters drill for basically for drilling in between 16 inch on center studs. If you needed to drill something in there, a regular drill is too big. So this is a close quarters construction drill, basically is what this is. So again, it's I know it's way too over the top, but that's what I found and it is heavy. My arm does get kind of tired every once in a while holding this up, polishing for a while, but it works. So this is now my machine polishing setup 
for plastic model cars and I've been having great success with this setup. So I'm gonna wet sand some of this down a little bit and then I will show you guys how actually this works. Um, you can use any kind of a polishing product that you want. Tamiya polishing pastes, automotive grade, Formula One scratch out, I've used this a little bit. Um, I find I use these probably the most. Uh, the rubbing compound and this is the blue polish this is more of a finishing compound so I'll use this with my black sponges and these are from scalefinishes.com so I'll just put a little bit on the sponge uh, stick the sponge on there and then just polish it off so this is how I machine polish my plastic model cars now so I'll get some of that wet sanded down and then I'll show you how that works all right so for wet sanding I'm just going to be using a 3000 grit automotive grade wet dry sandpaper. I'll just sand down the parts that I need to polish back out and see how that turns out. Alright, got the body sanded down, just the parts that I wanted to. So this clear coat is a 2K clear coat and one of the great things about a 2K clear coat is it's really hard offers a lot of protectant for your model. And of course, that's the bad thing too, is it's really hard. So it's really tough to sand and polish out. It just takes a lot more time. If you're using something softer like a Tamiya Clear, less sanding and less polish is actually needed. One good practice is to always start with the least aggressive and then move up as needed. So if I were using a Tamiya, I'd probably start with the black sponge, maybe even just the blue polish, which is more of a finish compound. Um, and just try that a little bit, see how it goes, and then move up to the yellow if needed. Um, with a Tamiya, I probably wouldn't go with the orange. Um, it's just a lot softer of a clear. But since I've used 2K clears a lot, I'm actually gonna start with the orange sponge and I'm gonna start with the rubbing compound from Scale Finishes. Now, this drill is actually, you can get these at uh, Harbor Freight as well. So that's one place to get these if you want or you shop for them online, whatever. And you don't have to use this. I've even seen small drills um, that Micromark has. Saw that after the fact, I probably would have tried that first, but there are other options, but I just wanted something corded that could drive my polishing sponge without running out of batteries. So this is heavy duty, I admit that, but um, you can find something a little bit less aggressive if you want. So I usually just apply a little bit on the sponge, just spread it around, kind of priming the sponge, and then just start polishing. And then to wipe it off, you can just use any microfiber cloth or soft cloth that you want. I prefer microfiber over like a cotton base or something like that. But the microfiber, any microfiber cloth uh, works just fine. And those results are pretty good. That's just one pass. I usually do probably three passes maybe with the rubbing compound before I move down to a lesser, more of a finishing compound. But just check your work in between and see how it's doing. So I've actually found I have more control uh, with the machine and the sponge than I do by hand. And I've burned through less corners using these sponges than I have also by hand. So one of the things to look out for is the rotation of your sponge. If I'm coming up to maybe this edge of the sunroof I want the polishing sponge to be spinning away from the edge so in this instance it would be clockwise that way it can brush over the edge without catching and coming back so if I were coming in more like this where the edge is coming in again clockwise but now my pressure is at a different angle where the sponge is actually going to be digging in more into the edge I want the sponge to be more going off the edge more than coming into the edge um, it just helps for burning through edges a little bit more. So, for example, if I were coming up to this edge, I would angle, because it's going clockwise, I would angle my sponge so that it's spinning more off of the edge rather than angling it in where it's spinning onto the edge and it will catch more. So just something to think about as you're polishing out. 
Now as you're going through and polishing, you will get some uh, material in the seams and panel lines and stuff like that. I just keep a bucket of water next to me and a little kind of a medium stiffer bristle brush and just kind of work through in those seams and door panels and panel lines uh, just to get that out of there. And it will come out. You just kind of brush it and it'll just come right out. If you do let it dry in there, it'll take a little bit longer, but it will still come out if you just kind of work it with the brush and some water. Um, it'll come right out of those grooves, so don't worry about that too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this cleaned up, uh, polished out. But uh, that's my that's been my experience with machine polishing and how to get that to work for scale model cars. So if you have any other questions, let me know. I'll be happy to try to answer as many questions as I can. But I uh, hope that was helpful. Hope you guys enjoy that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.